Hi, my name is Tyler, and today I want to show you how to emulate Technicolor in DaVinci Resolve. And if you don't know what Technicolor is, have you ever watched Wizard of Oz and you see all of that color when you go to the Land of Oz? That's what Technicolor is. And if you haven't watched Wizard of Oz, what's wrong with you? Go watch Wizard of Oz. It's amazing. Now, Technicolor is technically out of print, but today it's still being emulated in movies like Barbie and other movies like La La Land. So when emulating Technicolor in DaVinci Resolve, it can get pretty complicated because it's a three strip color process of red, green, and blue, then cyan, magenta, and yellow with a black and white negative. It's, it's complicated, but I'm gonna to try to make it as simple as possible. And there are a few caveats when working with this node tree and how you want to color manage in terms of the project settings. Because if you don't do it right and you try to make this node, it's going to look funky and crazy. And yeah, just follow along and let's have some fun. Okay, we are in our color page now. Before you add any clips to your timeline, please go to your color management at bottom right cog wheel. Click on that color management tab. I got mine already set up at DaVinci YRGB is the color science. The timeline color space is DaVinci White Gamma Intermediate and the output color space is Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Next up, we are going to create a serial node by pressing Option S or Alt S if you're on Windows. The color space transform is under the effects. Add that. We are at DaVinci Wide Gamut. So we are going to click on DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate as the gamma. And the output color space, we are going to put it at, you guessed it, Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. And then next up for tone mapping, we're going to do luminance mapping. Use custom max input as 10,000 custom max output at 100. And then for gamut mapping method, we're going to do saturation compression. And that's a good start. Next up, we're going to create some nodes. So press Shift S to create a node prior. And then what we're going to do outside of this node tree is we're going to add three corrector nodes. OK. And what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect this from the last node. And then we are going to connect these three connector nodes to the first node. OK, so that is a good start right there. We'll push this off to the side because we got a lot of nodes to add. And then next up, we are going to right click and add three layer mixer nodes. OK. All right, we have three layer mixer nodes added, and then we're simply just going to connect these to the first connector on each of these. And then for the next part, we're going to add three more corrector nodes. right here, and then we are going to connect all of these together. And then once again, we're going to add three more layer mixer nodes. And then we will connect all of these together. Okay. And then for the last little bit, we were going to add one more set of corrector nodes. So add corrector. Corrector. And then we will connect all of these together. make our screen a little bit smaller so we have a little bit more room. 
And then lastly, we are going to add one more layer mixer node on here. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this layer mixer node and we're going to add one input on this because we have three nodes connecting to this last piece. And we're going to connect all of these accordingly. OK. And then we will connect this last node layer onto this piece. And now we have an image that is here. It's a little bit overexposed right now, but that is completely fine. What you can do for now is just offset it down a little bit. OK, and first we're going to start organizing and getting everything in order. So these first three nodes right here, we're going to label these red. green, blue. Alrighty. And then these last three nodes, we're going to label red, green, and then you guessed it, blue. Okay. Next up, we're going to have to do a composite mode on each of these layers, right? So the first set will be subtract. So we'll right click on each layer and go to subtract, right click, composite mode, subtract. Same thing on this very last one. And then the next set of layer mixer nodes we're going to put as add because we're adding back in the color at the end. And then this very last layer mixer node it'll be add also. All right, if you see a super bright image, you are in the right place. Okay, so on the first node right here, the red, we will go to the RGB mixer and we are going to subtract anything that's not red to zero. So zero out this, zero out this, and then all of the reds we will make as one. Right. And then the green, the same thing. So all of the greens will be one. And then everything else will be zero. OK. And then the last one, the blue, same exact thing. And the blue gets one, and this blue gets one. Alrighty, next step before we move on, all of these need to have monochrome and preserve luminance unchecked. So uncheck it on the blue, uncheck on the green, uncheck on the red. Okay, great starting point. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to create a measure for correcting later, um, we can call it level. All right, so this is where it gets a little bit more in complex and stuff like that. So right click, add a corrector node, right click, add a corrector node, and then right click and add a corrector node. And I will label this level. level and then level. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to simply connect each level to its coordinating place. So this level on the bottom will go to the blue. This level in the middle will go to the green. And this level right here will go to the red. OK, next up, we will be changing the level of all of these on the gain from the log wheels. So the first level, we're going to bring it down the gain to 0.333. The next one on the green, we're going to bring it down to 0.333.
and the last one will bring down to 0.33. If I can get there. Okay, perfect. So next up, we are going to be connecting these to the next layer mix node. So we're connecting these levels to the next layer mixer node. So what we're gonna do is on this one, we're gonna connect this green square to the green and the blue because it is connected to the red right now and we wouldn't connect it to the green and the blue. So we connect to the green, we connect to the blue down here and the next one, if you haven't guessed already, we're gonna be connecting it to the other corresponding colors opposite of the green. So we're connecting one to the red and one to the blue. But it looks like we don't have any more over here. So what we do is we connect this one right here we are even on the red, so we're gonna connect it to the blue on the other layer mixer node. So we're gonna grab this, connect it to the blue, right? And then this level, we are connect it to a green and a red, right? So we don't have any more to connect to over here. So we're gonna connect it over to the other one. So one on the red, and then one on the green. Perfect. So next up, what we're going to do is we are going to dial in the red, the green, and the blue on the RGB mixer. So on the red side, we're going to RGB mixer, and this time is going to work a little bit differently. We are going to have red as one, and every other color is going to be zero. So zero zero, right? And then here on the green, we're gonna do zero for everything besides the one green output. So zero, zero, right? And for the blue one, we are gonna do the same exact thing. Blue stays the same on the blue output, but everything else is zero. Okay, perfect. So now we have a super bright image. Let's take off the preserved luminance on this blue one, take off the preserved luminance on the green one, and take off the preserved luminance on the red one. Boom. That is our finished image right there. So to make your life easier so you never have to do this again, you want to make a node that is a compound node. So what we can do is we can turn off this primary offset and we're gonna grab, actually, let's leave that on. We're gonna grab all of these nodes right here and we're gonna right click and create a compound node, boom. So now we have a compound node here, and then the color space transforms at the end. And if you never wanna to have to do this again, just go to your gallery and create a power grade. So you can add a power grade album by creating this, and then basically grab this still right here, and you have that forever. So make sure you save your project, right click, and then change your label to Technicolor. Boom. You're set to go. File, save project, techno. Awesome. Okay, now let's see what it looks like on the other images. So we'll apply the grade on these. Alrighty. And now we have the Technicolor look here, right? And you can dial in stuff more, obviously, and 
add contrast and all those kind of things, right? And what you can do also is go back into the compound node and right click and press show compound node. And under all these levels, you can change the levels from that 0.33 to whatever you want to, but you want them all to be the same. So if you raise this up to 0.4, you want to raise this one up to 0.4 also. And then the last one up to 0.4, right? So you're going to be getting a more intense version of it. Okay, perfect. And here's something you can do if you want a really crazy look. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll look at this one. I'll turn off my gallery. What you can do for any crazier looks is you can, on these last one, switch these around and you'll get some wild, almost like two tone crazy looks. So let's give an example. I'll disconnect these and then I'll put the red one. This was the only red. I'll put it on the green. And then the green one I'll put on the red and then the blue one I'll put on the blue. And we have this look, which is way different. And we can take that off and start over and say, I want the green on the blue and then the blue on the red and then the red on the green. And we have another look right here. All right. And we can switch it up and get crazy with it. But that's just a, a fun look. Okay. Well, thanks for joining me today and watching this video on how to emulate Technicolor. Hopefully you had fun and hopefully you got something out of this and you're going to start having crazy, cool, vibrant colors in your videos and just Thank me by liking and subscribing and um, asking any questions or if you have any comments or if this just looks awful to you, let me know. All right. Have a good day. Bye.